Good morning, everyone. So good to see your faces this morning. I'm Reverend Deborah Thorne, the minister here, and this morning I get to be the service leader. If this is your first time with us, a special warm welcome to you. Whatever your ethnicity, theological belief, gender, sexual orientation, age, and everything else that makes you who you are, please know that you are very warmly welcomed in our group this morning. And you might wanna know that we have a fabulous website and we invite you to check it out for more detailed information about who we are, the services that we offer and how to connect with everybody here. This morning we acknowledge that we meet on the unceded territory of the Shinemu First Nation. As Unitarians, we are committed to the work of reconciliation required to address the harm that has been done to all Indigenous peoples and their cultures by non-Indigenous people. This coming week is Truth and Reconciliation Week. And on Thursday, it will be the very first National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. I encourage everyone to take a moment on Thursday to reflect on the impact of residential schools and perhaps learn something new about the Indigenous history here on Vancouver Island and in Nanaimo. The city of Nanaimo and the Shinemu First Nation are hosting a day of reconciliation at Mufio Sutton Park. And that happens between 10 and two on Thursday. And I, I hope to see many of you down there on Thursday. So it's time for our announcements. Thank you, Tony, for putting up the flowers. These are beautiful roses that are blooming in front of the building. And the building is looking forward to uh, welcoming you soon. Uh, a reminder, that we do record these services and the children's story uh, are, for copyright reasons are edited out as are the joys and the concerns before we put them up, services up on our website. And just a reminder there is that we have all the services up there and if you like a particular one or missed one uh, or wanna tell somebody about it, just send them to the website. Now, in preparation for the special Unitarian National Meeting and vote on the eighth principle, which is happening on November 27th, uh, there are a number of opportunities to learn and hear from each other. Please look at our weekly update for information on the national discussion groups and learning circles. Uh, and here at the fellowship, I'm going to be leading a study and discussion on the 94 calls to action recommended by the Truth, Healing and Reconciliation Commission. So circle your calendar for Wednesday, October 6th at 7 p.m. And there'll be a link this week in the weekly update. I have no last minute announcements. So to find out about all other special events, groups and meetings taking place at the fellowship, you go to the calendar on the webpage or read that weekly update that sends, is sent out by lease on Thursdays. And now let's take a deep breath, settle in to our bodies and our hearts and enter into sacred time together. I invite Patrick, our musical director to lead us into our worship time through music. Good morning. So um, the music this morning for the prelude is uh, going to be a, a little piano version medley that I've come up with um, in the spirit of community get togetherness and coming together to help each other and, and a lot of uh, optimism about the future. I thought I would um, have a little have a little fun playing this. I was kind of inspired by uh, 
Reverend Deborah's choice to uh, to do a, a Beatles song at the last service. So um, this is my piano arrangement of with a little help from my friends, and here comes the sun. We bring all of our experience to this day. We welcome the experience you bring. We bring all of our stories to share. We welcome your stories. We arrive here today from many different places and traditions. We welcome your presence and the traditions you bring. In our fellowship, we have a multitude of feelings. We welcome all your feelings, the joy, the despair, the fear, and the hope. All of you is welcome here. In our fellowship, we have a multitude of concerns. We have personal concerns for our health and our safety. We have concerns for our friends and families. We have concerns for our species. We welcome your concerns and hold you in our hearts. For 18 months, we have navigated the ups and downs, the openings and the closings of an unpredictable world. For 18 months, we have longed to sing and to hug and to feel each other's warm and happy energy. The day is coming soon when some of us who feel comfortable to do so and have been double vaccinated will be able to meet indoors. We'll start slowly with these changes and check in with you as we shift. We will still meet here on Zoom, which has worked so well for us this last year and a half. It has allowed us to stay connected and meet folks Zooming in from all over the globe. And have a peek into each other's homes. 
This morning, we are preparing to reopen to new experiences, new stories, and new realities with you. Today is our last Sunday service entirely on Zoom. Next week, we will begin to open the hall for those who are comfortable with being in a room of 50 people. There will be some of you who will continue to participate on Zoom because you feel safer that way or because you like being able to stay in your pajamas and drink a second cup of tea like me. <laughs> Together, we are beginning an experiment into multiple space community. What does it mean to be all together in community, but in different locations? What are our fears? What are our hopes? What might we lose? What will be gained? What does it mean to reopen to each other in this new world? To become one whole community again. Singing, laughing, seeing and touching and worshiping together as one multi-layered, multi-spatial community. We'll find out together. Yes, we will. We light our chalice. Claim for the strength of community, the power of connection, and the resilience of spirit. First, uh, the first song this morning is number 349 in the Grey Book. This is We Gather Together. Thank you to Tony for sharing the slides with the lyrics. Uh, so please sing along with me at home. We all sure hope that the other side of the wall will be fantastic. We've all had many different experiences as Larry and Beth pointed out in the opening words over the last 18 months of the pandemic restrictions. And now we face this process of what we've named our reopening or the other side of the wall. It's our theme for the whole year. So as we look toward this unpredictable and unknown future, we also have a multitude of thoughts and feelings. For this reason, I thought it would be really helpful for us to hear from more than one person about the impact over of these last months and their thoughts and feelings about moving into this reopening. I am very grateful to Larry Bolt and Beth McLynn and Deborah Goodman for their reflections this morning.
Good morning, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Larry Bolt. My wife, Sharon, and I moved to Nanaimo in December 2019 from Victoria. That way we could be closer to three of our grandchildren, but they live here in Nanaimo. In Victoria, we were members of the First Unitarian Church for several years where, where we had developed many friendships. We attended our first services at Fufon in mid to late December of 2019, continued attending services, and even a spaghetti dinner, slowly meeting people. Then March 15th, 2020, lockdown. We had met people and had some acquaintances, but it had not had time to develop friendships yet. Things opened a little in the summer and by fall, we were able to join a bowling league, which lasted two and a half months before being shut down as the second wave hit. Again, not enough time to develop friendships. To keep busy, I found a new friend named Zoom. This helped me to participate with a support group, Fufon, and family in other parts of the country. I was able to connect with a doctor and other medical professionals as needed. I joined an electric car association and the strata council of our condo, all via Zoom. My one saving grace through all of this was that I was able to play golf. This was only shut down during the initial lockdown in March last year. However, during this past year and a half, there are many things that I missed, such as theater, both live and cinema, going out for dinner, attending Fufon in person, and even meeting our neighbors, except from our patio to theirs. We have grand twins who are gonna be five this week. Their preschool closed and didn't reopen. As a result, these two have pretty much only had each other to play with during this pandemic. When babysitting, we take them out to playgrounds, but when other children approach them, they hide behind us, fearful of the others. We feel that this fear is a direct, direct result of the pandemic shutdown and pandemic shutdown and affecting many children. We've been quite concerned how they would react when they left for school for the first time. Being children, they adapted and have now settled in. As things began to reopen this summer, we still saw a steady number of COVID cases happening. We were able to get our vaccinations in early June, but we read that we can still con contract this virus, but not as seriously as, though, as those who are unvaccinated. Our son, daughter-in-law, and 14-year-old grandson are all vaccinated. However, the twins are too young yet. Because they are too young to be vaccinated, we have concerns about taking them out where there may be large gatherings. We finally got the courage to go up to a movie theater. And, well, we were pleasantly surprised with the safety protocols that had been put in place. They made us feel very comfortable. But on the other side, we went to another, a new restaurant. And though we stayed, we felt quite anxious. It was a buffet meal and there was hand sanitizer at the start of the line, but many did not use it, and few kept any distance from others. After this experience, we've decided not to vote for dinner yet. So what does a full reopening mean to me? I won't have a complete answer to this until after this fourth wave or longer. However, once we are fully reopened, I picture many changes for myself, such as wearing a mask in crowded situations, keeping hand sanitizer with me, and using disinfectant around our home regularly. I plan to keep a Zoom account. Since this has been a wonderful tool to have, we've been able to connect on a more personal level, level with our son in Eastern Canada and get to see his children. The youngest was born in Toronto in May of 2020. So we refer to him lovingly as our COVID baby. His oldest is our three-year-old granddaughter. We've not seen her in person since her first birthday in 2019. Our son is in the Canadian Army and once he receives his posting next spring, we eagerly plan to visit and meet our COVID baby and see our granddaughter once again, sometime in 2022. Namaste. Hi, 
I am a teacher and I returned to the classroom three weeks ago. I did so with trepidation. Faculty at my university had been mandated back to campus. At the end of the last school year, university student surveys indicated that students in large numbers were experiencing symptoms such as depression, anger, and suicidal ideation. These troubling symptoms were attributed to the isolation associated with online schooling during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I can imagine, because just thinking back on my first year of university and how much of the experience was social, in an online classroom, casual conversations cannot happen and friendships cannot begin easily. But then again, did I want to go back out into the world during an ongoing and seemingly endless pandemic? <laughs> did I really want to stand in a room facing 35 to 70 young adults to lecture when the air around me might be carrying invisible aerosolized particles and the potential with the potential to end my life? No, I, I didn't really want to go back. And I do enjoy teaching a lot, but I am a risk averse person. I am not excessively fearful but I do not like being vulnerable. In fact, making myself vulnerable is not something I will do voluntarily as it is almost impossible for me. And yes, before you ask, I have read Brene Brown and I do admire her work. But with that said, I really like feeling safe. I like knowing what to expect. And I suspect that this is very, very strong tendency goes back to my childhood. Like many other people, I did not grow up in a home where I felt safe or even loved unconditionally. And that was a long time ago. And today I am blessed with a partner who I feel safe with. And I'm very grateful to have had him by my side during the first and I hope only pandemic of my lifetime. But for me, the world does not feel very safe right now. So reopening is scary to me. I don't wish to become ill or risk making someone else ill. So the idea of reopening leaves me feeling very uncertain. But with that said, I have been back in the classroom for three weeks now and my students are so happy to be there and I am happy to be there too. Mask mandates are being followed with very little resistance. Vaccine, vaccine uptake rates are very high in my school and students and faculty do not come to campus when they think they might be ill. And we are all very hopeful that we will be able to complete the semester face to face. But every day that goes by without a big outbreak, we've had a few cases but in three weeks, but without a big outbreak makes it a little easier for me to trust that we can be safe when we're together. So my hope is that we will all come out on the other side, on the other side of the wall, I guess, healthy, whole, and safe, and reopened. Good morning, everyone. At last week's service, Reverend Deborah mentioned the Jewish festival of Sukkot, which is a week-long festival of rejoicing. It began on the evening of September 20th, and it ends tomorrow night. Until this year, I thought of September as having only two Jewish holidays, Rosh Hashanah, marking the new year in the Hebrew calendar, and Yom Kippur, the time of fasting and reflection. I had heard of Sukkot, but it didn't seem noteworthy, it didn't have the gravitas of the high holidays. I'm seeing things in a new light. Sukkot is the only Jewish holiday that calls us to a time of rejoicing, seven consecutive days and nights of rejoicing. And how are we to rejoice? By gathering together with friends and family, to eat, drink, talk, and laugh together. This is the great hope that reopening holds for me. 
the time when I can gather with all of you again in our building at a spaghetti night, a messy church program, or a Harbor City concert, or to celebrate a birth, a marriage, a life passing, a time when we can rejoice collectively. We aren't quite there yet, but there are reasons for gratitude in the here and now. Sukkot commemorates how my ancestors wandered in the desert for 40 years, living in temporary shelters, the sukkahs or booths. Hopefully, our time of lockdown will not be that prolonged, but it feels like 40 years to many of us, particularly healthcare workers, and our challenges continue extending into the future. Sukkot helps remind the Jewish people that all the time they wandered, they were protected by God. This year, Sukkot helps remind me that through all of this pandemic, we have been protected by many forces of goodness. People who developed and distributed vaccines, healthcare workers and local governments that provided those vaccines to us. That is one reason for rejoicing and feeling gratitude. Sukkot also commemorates the harvest season. I am profoundly reminded that one of the blessings we have experienced during these times is the privilege of having enough food to eat. Stores have remained open. Farmers have grown food. Transporters have moved that food from the fields to our stores. Workers have stocked the shelves and staffed the checkout lines. We have had no disruptions to our water supply, our energy supplies, our internet service, or our media outlets. I'm taking time to think about that. It's another reason to rejoice. Above all, what reopening means for me is the future time when we gather in our homes together once again in large and small groups to share some wonderful food and wine in person. I look forward to congregating in our homes, and I look forward to assembling again in the Unitarian Hall, our shared home. I have missed that so very much, and I will never take it for granted again. For now, I am still wandering in the desert, awaiting that time. And when it arrives, I look forward to hosting dinner parties as often as possible and raising our glasses together in a toast of Lahayim to life. So the next song is uh, number 146 in the Gray Book, Soon the Day Will Arrive. And you've already been hearing uh, snippets of it here. Um, thank you again to Tony for displaying the slides with the lyrics. Please, uh, please sing along. Soon the day will arrive when we will be together and no longer will we live in fear. And the children will smile Without wondering whether on that day thunder clouds will appear. Wait and see, wait and see what a world there can be if we share, if we care, you and me. Wait and see, wait and see what a world there can be if we share, if we care, you and me. Some have dreamed, some have died To make a bright tomorrow And our vision remains in our hearts Now the torch must be passed With new hope wrought in sorrow And a promise to make a new start Wait and see, wait and see share if we care you and me. Wait and see, wait and see what a world there can be if we share, if we care you and me. Well, 
Well, thank you, Larry, and thank you, Beth, and thank you, Deborah. That was wonderful to hear your different perspectives and, and feel your feelings about where we've been and where we are going together. I've decided to hold this year lightly and suggest that you do the same. Rather than hold our fists tightly, you could try it yourselves, rather than holding our fists tightly that we open them and hold our hands lightly, our palms open. And when I do that, I can feel my body taking an involuntary deep breath. And I think that's useful. It's certainly useful for me. Remember to hold things lightly. I think we need to hold things lightly because we have no idea what next year will bring, how it will unfold. And because we know at this point, we're going to have to adjust to living with COVID and its variants in the world for a while yet. And because it's hard to be hopeful and then be disappointed to plan and then have to let go of our plans. And because it's destabilizing to not be sure how to keep oneself and family from getting COVID. And because there's so many stories and interpretations of the scientific data and all the other opinions swirling around online and between people. And because we don't need the added pressures to do it the way we've always done it, head down and pushing forward, ticking everything off, being super organized, being ambitious, because maybe that's not good for us this year. Because we want to learn to be gentle with ourselves and with each other. And because life is going to be throwing up regular challenges. You know, it's going to be throwing up falling in love and falling out of love getting new jobs, losing jobs, accidents and deaths, marriages and all manner of celebration. So this year, I invite you to join with me and hold ourselves lightly and lightly together. So it means rather than the closed fist, we open our hearts we open our hands. Now, reopening is not going to stop us from caring about each other. The connection callers in our community, the group of people that reach out to those who may live alone or um, just want to stay in telephone communication with each other, the connection callers are going to continue to do their work and bless them for that. And I'm also here as an extra support if you need it. There will be an email in the next few days out to everybody in the community with instructions on reserving your in-person seat in the hall for October 3rd. Now we're still working on some technical issues so that Sunday services will be equal in their experience, whether you're participating online or whether you're in person in the hall. Our goal is that both those experiences will be equal. Now this is gonna be an experiment and we're gonna get some things wrong and we're gonna to need to try things different ways. So we ask for your patience, but we also ask for your feedback. So if something is happening, you have an insight or a concern, please let us know. Please let me know or send a message to Lise so that we're connected as we go through all of this. 
Now you will need to be fully vaccinated to be in the building. And we're going to ask that everybody wear masks. We are not going to ask for a vaccine passport on Sunday mornings. We're using the honor system. So through this whole year, we are that we're calling our reopening because it's not going to happen on one day. I think we'd all love that, but that's not what this reopening is about. It's not how it can be. It's going to be in stages. It's going to be incremental as we get used to it. We've heard everyone has different levels of comfort, different levels of anxiety, different fears, different hopes, dreams. We're going to take it stage by stage, each person doing what they need for themselves. But I know, I know that we will come back to a moment, a day, and a time where we are really comfortable all being back together in person in the hall. And through this year, we are going to share our joy and sadness together. We will continue to celebrate the seasons together and the holy days. We will share our creative energies and skills with each other, and we will make new friends. There will be new members of the community formed, and we will deepen our relationships together. And I have no doubt that we will celebrate and we will laugh and cry together. So our, our last song to sing together is uh, very appropriately, We Laugh, We Cry, number 354 in the Gray Book. Thank you once again to Tony for showing the lyrics on the slides. And as always, please sing along at home like no one's listening or like everyone's listening, whichever is your preferred. Our lives are 
full of wonder and our time is very brief. The death of one among us fills us all with pain and grief. But as we live, so shall we Hello, now that we are online, we welcome your donations and pledges in two different ways. First, we've set up the Unitarian Fellowship Bank account so that you can automatically deposit e-transfers sent to info at ufon.ca. That's info at ufon.ca. Secondly, you can write a check and just pop that in the mail as well. Our charity, from September through November is the Nanaimo Unitarian Shelter. If you would like to donate to the Nanaimo Unitarian Shelter, please note that on your e-transfer or check. We are very grateful for your offering. Our closing words are by Maureen Killeran. As we weather winds of change, May we have wisdom to cherish moments of stillness. As we recollect times of challenge and of pain, may we remember also the graceful blessings of our lives. As we look to future unknowns, may we have the boldness to trust that there is unimagined good yet to come. So be it. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. We come now to the closing song, Carry the Flame. Please do switch to gallery mode by clicking on the view button in the top right corner and that way you can see everybody all at once. Imagine that we're joined hand in hand in a big circle and please join in singing the words with me. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. Carry and love until
until we meet again. Then we shall see a world of light and a world of joy. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again.